Hi. Uh, I think we're just about to start uh, live streaming on YouTube as well. Um, but if I could uh, welcome everybody to this BAFTA masterclass on composition with the uh, the wonderful Hilda Gunadottir, who is, uh, I, I think, probably out of everybody working now, I would say one of the biggest inspirations to me. And I oh, know to lots and lots of other people, which is a, a, an embarrassing in introduction, of course, but, but uh, I, I think is, uh, is could, uh, makes, makes a lot of sense. Now, um, we're going to do, I'll just uh, explain a little bit of the housekeeping today. We've got 75 uh, minutes together, and uh, so we're going to have 55 minutes of uh, of conversation and uh, and with Hilda explaining some of her wonderful processes and we, and we can talk about Joker and talk about Chernobyl and, and your previous work as well. Um, but then also we'll have 20 minutes for questions um, from, uh, from the Q&A panel. So if you're on the Zoom chat, then down at the bottom, uh, there is a Q&A window. Um, if you would like to enter some questions in there, we'll see what we can make of them uh, in the last 20 minutes at the end. Um, but uh, just for anybody who's not familiar with Hilda's work, um, she's probably, I think, got one of the most bulging awards cabinets of anybody over the last year or two from uh, from the, the extraordinary reaction to some of the film and TV work that she's done, uh, Joker and Chernobyl. But uh, I think for uh, many people who, who knew her work before, then one of the fascinating uh, things is... Uh, uh, for me, certainly, is about her uh, development as an artist um, and her uh, earlier earlier work and her recordings and 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 then how that has become um, parlayed and 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 seen in some of the programs that we see. Uh, so that's a, a long winded in introduction. But uh, hello, Hilda. Hello, Michael. <laughs> 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 Thank you for the lovely introduction. It's, <laughs> it, it's always it, it's the the most sort of kind of mortifying thing to have to, to have to sit through somebody kind of go and they went to school here and then when they were 17 yeah. they, they did a, a good bicycle challenge um what well, how we're going to structure uh hopefully the this masterclass today and um and, and obviously you know there's so much interest in in you talking about your techniques is We've got a couple of um, specific clips that um, are, have either been sent out in invitations to attendees or will be uh, re-upped on the on the chat windows as well. One from the bathroom scene from Joker, and then a, a, an amazing scene from episode two in on Chernobyl. Um, but I'd really like to, to before we kind of dig into the weeds, um, I'd, I'd love um, to hear more about really your sort of your how things started because I know your family was a very musical family as well so it feels like you've been kind of swimming in music in, in a way right from the very start yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah pretty much everyone in my family are, are musicians it's either like music music or or health so people are either you know musicians composers or doctors or nurses or <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I, I choose music rather than uh, <laughs> help. But if somebody had a small accident, you could still help out, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know the tricks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But uh, yes, exactly. Just music is a healer. I, I, I guess it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's it's sort of um, well, music has always been the that kind of the best parameter of my mental health, I guess. And well, actually, and also physical health. I think I think you need to be, um, I think it's important to be um, connected to your body and connected to your joints, specifically, like when you're making music. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's a part of my process that I, that's, that's very important and that I, that I think is, is not really talked about enough. That's the, the, the kind of, the, the how you need to nurture yourself to nurture the music and, and your body is such a big part of that even if you're just sitting there oh I mean like especially if you're sitting in front of your computer the whole day it's like it's um I find the way to 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 access um access ideas and to access access um the, the thought process like happens very much like in the body, you know, it happens in the joints and the more fluid your joints are, the, the more fluid your thoughts are, the more fluid that, 
creativity is is uh, flowing you know so i think there's there's definitely a connection between the, between the two <laughs> i think i think that's fascinating um, and obviously as a, as a cellist yourself which is a sort of a kind of i've, I've always felt like a whole body instrument yes, in a way that really that yeah. some yeah. Are, some instruments are very sort of small and tight or very yeah. but but no, the, need to the be, resonance of exactly yeah no to, to be able to play the cello you need to um yeah you need, you need to really use your body and you need to be connected to your body because it is a, it is an instrument that you're basically you're you're using your whole body to play you know you feel it very much like with, within your like it resonates in your chest it resonates in your lungs so your, your breathing is very connected to it as well and, the, and and your joints need to be you know fluid but i think that also it goes for every instrument and i'm of course like just someone who's always sung a lot as well and the body is of course like very connected to the to the voice and, and you know that your but I, I think i think it goes for every instrument and i think it goes for composition and the thought process as well like I've, and this is something that i've been thinking about a lot that the, the, the kind of the more uh blocked you are within your within your body i think the, the more blocked your thought process is going to be and, and as a composer you know i think that's a physical that's a physical process as well because you you need to be able to visualize what it is that you want to do you need to be able to think up that you know it's like building a house you know you, know, you need to visualize the house before you just start putting bricks together like you need to kind of see the house and and and, uh, and to be able to to access your thoughts and to hear your thoughts i think that the body is is, a, is an important part of that and i've just um you know i've i've had a lot of my friends you know, composer friends, musician friends who, who I've seen have not been like aware enough about this and who have basically gotten like half paralyzed from just you know <laughs> sitting I, I'm, I'm sitting down as we yeah. speak. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sitting in front of their computer or sitting yeah. at, the, at the instrument because yeah. I think it's like you know it's it's um I think it's one of the most important things about keeping keeping your creativity alive and keeping your curiosity alive and keeping kind of just like your thoughts flowing is to be able to keep your body flowing and, and keeping like um just like a um, yeah like an active active process basically and, and i think the body is a it's it's a, it's a it's a part of that because i think the, the mind also it lives in the whole it's not just here like it lives in the whole in the whole system i think so that's that's uh, and and so do you do you think that this sort of this this approach which sounds very sounds very instinctive as well it sounds sort of uh not to say it's not cerebral but you know that there is some physicality to it was this uh did it kind of develop through your teen years was this always just always how you approached music because i mean you you did study sort of classically in inverted commas whatever that that means um but do you think though that as your path diverged from from the more sort of traditional classical training uh, were, were some of these ideas that you wanted to express yeah I, I think it's something that um it's something that's always been important to me but maybe more unconsciously than, than consciously. I think it's um, like we were, we had a little chat before this um, um, became, before our chat became public. <laughs> we, were, we were talking a little bit about, um, you know, how, how this, this, this time of, uh, um, how this COVID time is, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's uh, allowed us all a bit of space to kind of re-evaluate what, what what's important to us and what um, uh, yeah I, I guess also just to kind of reevaluate the process like what's important about the process and and uh, and, and these these thoughts that I mentioned about fluidity are, are something that I've especially been thinking a lot about in the last few months because you know when you're not even allowed to leave your house and you're not allowed to kind of access the fluidity that you would normally have with interacting with people and with, with uh, just, you know, going out for a walk or, or seeing friends or something. 
it's something that you start to miss and then you realize like, hey, wait a minute, what is it that, like, what is it about this movement that that's not happening at the moment in this, in these circumstances where I'm basically just forced to be at, at, at home. And then you kind of, you start to pinpoint like, oh, wow, okay, it's this and it's, and it's that. And I think that's, you know, this, the, the, the thoughts and ideas about fluidity is something that um, I've been thinking about a lot the last years, I guess, or, or maybe kind of um, formulating, or like, how, how, would you, how would you explain that? Or just like, you know, forming into something that you can express with words. Because <laughs> that's, that's something I've had to do a lot <laughs> in the last year. It's like, I always <laughs> have to do a lot of talking, which I didn't normally have to do before. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's something that's, I think, always been really important to me. And as, as someone from, um, from Iceland, where, you know, I, I grew up in, a, um, in the Icelandic music scene where, where it's, it's um, you know, when, when I was, when I started making music with my friends and my teens, you know, it was, it was all about like dialogue and collaboration and we just basically make music together because there basically wasn't anything else to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's very dark. You know, yeah, exactly. Very dark and no internet and no, no way of getting out of the country or anything. You know? Nothing else to do, basically. So, so we all started making music together, like, you know, bands like Moon or Sigurros or, you know, these um, contemporaries, Icelandic contemporaries that were, um, start, we start making music as a, as a conversation. You know, and, and that is, when you're having a, a dialogue with someone, um, well, at least that you like, you know, if you're having a dialogue that you enjoy, <laughs> there is a lot of fluidity in that, but there's a lot of movement in that, and that's something that I, that that's the, the way that I always enjoyed creating the most, where it's, if there is dialogue and there's movement and there's, you know, ideas are just flowing and, and, um, and as, as opposed to, you know, when you're trying to create something and you're just like you're really stuck and you're trying to kind of force something out of a you know yes, <laughs> you're sitting, sitting by yourself in a room and you're just like I want to make this <laughs> and it's just it's like nothing really nothing I mean we've all been there we've all oh. you know, we've all oh, yeah. had to make music under those circumstances but it, it's a lot less fun you know it's a lot less <laughs> creative because it's more like kind of you know, banging your head against the wall. But and I think so, so I think this is like a part of my process that's always been very present in my mm. music making and in my history. But it's something that I've just kind of started to realize in the later years, like how important it is to me and that it's actually yeah. the, um, the way that um, you know the more you um, enjoy the process and the more you kind of fluid you can keep it the more kind of you know enjoyable and alive you can keep the process the more fun it is and and, and uh, you know the, the more fun you have the more it resonates with you and then you know the more it resonates with you it seemingly resonates with with other people as well and you have a chance to kind of you know create like a bit bigger resonance with which is uh, ultimately i think what um what you're trying to do when you when you make music, you know, you're trying to basically you're you're having a I, I see the whole process basically as both as just making music and, and working on films and, and collaborating. I mean it's whether you're having a dialogue with yourself in a room or or or, or a director or whomever you're talking to, it's it's all it's all a dialogue, you know. It's dialogue. And I think it's it's um yeah the more the more fun you have having that dialogue in the, in the conversation the um the the, the um uh yeah the the the, 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 the kind of it's it's not really it's not so much about having like a a wider audience like that's that's never really been important to me but but to feel that that what you are making is like it's it's moving people like it's speaking to people and you're you're able to have a have a resonant dialogue with with people that you're you'll never even meet you know it's, it's such a beautiful thing about, about music it's like you know something that 
you know, having a dialogue with yourself or whomever, and then you put a message in a bottle and throw it out, and then someone's going to hear it or, or, mm -hmm. or, you know, resonate with it, and, and that's, and it's going to speak to them. And that's like, you know, it's such a beautiful, such a beautiful process. I, you know, I think that's absolutely fascinating because, um, you know, we're, we're going to look um, at a couple of the specific projects in a moment. But I think what, um, for me anyways, is incredibly illuminating is to hear you describe that process of flow and communication and collaboration, because it feels like you've managed to bring that, and, and maybe you'll be able to tell us, bring that intact into uh, these films or, or TV shows that that have reached a, a very wide audience, but I think uh, certainly from the from the outside, if people first got to know your work through, say, Joker, which was obviously you know sort of a, a global success, then I I think imagining that that you had sort of set your sights on on writing Joker and just studied and da, 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 that. I think is to is to uh, sort of misinterpret and 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 not to understand you as an artist and and you as a person. Um, and maybe and maybe we can move on to on to Joker now because I I um I think we've probably all read some of the the backstory of of how you um uh, how you were writing before and how your your process wasn't necessarily just a traditional. Uh, here's the film. You've got four weeks. Off you go. The orchestra's, you know, waiting for you a, a week on Friday. Um, had you worked with Todd, the director, before? How, how, what was your entry point into the into the film? Yeah, no, I'd never worked with him before. I, I basically, I was he um, he sent me a, a, an email and um, said that he really loved my music and asked me if I was interested. <laughs> 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 did it it could have gone in your spam folder and then it would have all been very different <laughs> exactly you. no i uh, um yeah and, and, and to be honest i was like you know initially i was like well i don't really you know because i just you know remember seeing the batman films and i was like well am i Am I the right person to be making a superhero film? Like I'm not really sure. <laughs> so, so, so I like initially when we um, when we spoke, I was I was kind of like you know just told him like straight out like if you know if if you want to make an action movie, I'm not sure if I'm the right person. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not really you know I'm, I'm not really super interested in that. Um, in the kind of, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's pre prejudice as well of, of me, but, but I'm not really somewhat yeah. interested in kind of fast pace, like um, okay. fast delivery, fast like thinking, you know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's kind of, I'm a pretty slow person. So, so I like to take time to, to be able to dive into things and be like, you know, go into the details and, and um, so, so my initial kind of reaction was just like, oh, are you sure? <laughs> 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 and then he did he said um he was just like no read the script and then you'll understand and uh, so so he sent me the script and i read it and i just loved it i just really i just completely fell in love with the story that he um that he was that he was portraying and, and the kind of the character study that, that he um that he was he was doing with his character because it's, it's such an interesting aspect as well because it's, it's like it has this kind of whole History of, of, about him, like this. Uh, so I'm just gonna close the door. My, <coughs> my son can close the door. Who's <laughs> <laughs> bringing him in? <laughs> <All the merrier. laughs> He's playing chess out there. He's, he's, uh, I can oh, hear him God. talking about that. Admit. But um, uh, yeah. So so I was just I was really intrigued by this um by the um the history of the character and how much this this character means to such a wide audience like it's it's, it's people like i don't remember any like villain in in cinema history that um or or even like beyond cinema just like um uh literature history as well comic history like you know a character that people feel so strongly about and that people yeah feel so strongly about 
both him as a character and also um, portrayals of his character that we've had, you know, the people just seem to like, you know, feel so strongly about him. It's really interesting to, to take a character like that that's so deeply rooted um, uh, for, for people, you know, it means a lot to so many people um, and kind of give um, uh, a bit of a different take on, you know, just like if, if you imagine like, you know, what if, what if this was his, his story? Like, what if he's not like, you know, the person that we thought he was, or, you know, he didn't come from the place that we thought he'd come from, or, or you know, where did he even come from? Or is that like, you know, reality? And, and it's, it's, it's so interesting with, um, with, with characters like that, that have, that have had, had, you know, they've lived their own lives, like, like real lives yeah. with, with, with uh, how they have resonated with people. And I, I find that really interesting. And I, and I just found it really such a fascinating process to be a part of and a, and a fascinating way of, of, of storytelling because it's, um, you know, when you, when you read the book, and you, you've invested so many hours with the characters that you're reading about and you start to like really feel for them and, and you start to really kind of you know, know the characters and, and, and kind of, uh, yeah, just resonate with them. And, and then, you know, when you finish the book, you're just sad to have to leave those, those people behind, you know, and I guess we've, or I hope we've all had this feeling because that's the magic of, of literature. And then we have this, through cinema or, or and, and comics, or and, you know, so you have this combination of, 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 of you know this, this huge outreach of, of both literature and and cinema, and it's just like it's it's like a really strong feeling that people have for him. So so I, I thought it was uh, yeah fascinating. And if we uh, look at um, uh, perhaps specifically the the bathroom scene, um, which is at a pivotal moment in the film when when Joker has really just sort of uh, kind of exploded. It's like the initiating action where he's, he's shot, for, for anybody who hasn't seen it, spoiler alert, where he's uh, shot kind of, you know, the, the violence inside him is broken out and he shot the guys on the train and, and then he runs through the streets and then comes into the scene as, as everybody will have, will have seen the clip. Now, um, in terms of your actual sort of composition process for this, was that a pre-existing piece that you'd written at the script stage that then Todd played and tracked in? And if it was, did you change it again at the end? Did you re-record? How, how would you say you got from no music to there being music in that scene? Yeah. No, I mean, that was really the... Um, this scene is really one of the most kind of... Well, it's, it's really one of the most magical... Um, moments of collaboration that I've had this, this scene specifically because mm. so, so thoughts had me in the script and asked me to uh, read it and, and just to see if I even liked it and, and I really like I said I really loved it and then he asked me to he asked me to start writing music just based on on my feelings of the script and, and, and you know just kind of what I he, he basically wanted to hear what I felt from the, from from reading the script, and and uh, and he didn't really give me any sort of instructions, or he didn't really, you know, he wasn't very specific about anything, but like to want to go into his head, and I think it was also clear from the script it was that we really needed to, we needed to follow him, like we needed to be inside him to 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 kind of feel what he was uh, feeling, and uh, so I I wrote a bunch of music and and. Um, and he just, he loved it, you know, he, he just really, it really resonated with him, what I had written. So we were just, it was one of these just really magical moments of, of uh, just complete um, kind of understanding of, of each other's like um, experiences. And, and it was just so great to be able to have that dialogue without any words, you know, be able to be able to just, um, I mean, of course, we were some of them were in the script, but we didn't, you know, <laughs> we no real need for like explanations or anything like that. And then, and then he took, took this music that I'd written and uh, um, and played it on set. So he basically, like in the bathroom dance scene, Joaquin is responding to this actual music that we hear um, uh, in the scene, and it's 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 pretty much 
it's, it's like pretty much identical to what I to what I wrote in the, in the first place, but but like re -record, I re-recorded the orchestra parts and and, and uh, added some vocals uh, afterwards. Exactly. But um, but so basically, Joaquin was able to really respond in real time to to the music, and the music was able yeah. to lead him through this through the transformation, and the, and then the you know the cinematographer was able to just you know follow Joaquin's lead. So basically, it's like this this big kind of dance together where you know Joaquin could just like be led by the music, and and everyone was sat basically was just like you know going going with Joaquin, and, and this this incredible <laughs> scene. Just, you know, came out of it. And then when they sent it to me, I was, because um, uh, this was one of the kind of first scenes that they shot, and it was the first scene they uh, sent to me from, from the set, like from the dailies. And it was just so magical to see that Joaquin was basically embodying what I had felt like from, from reading the script. And it was just like, so, because I had somehow felt these movements like like really similarly but they're not scripted like this like in this scene in particular it's just like he's supposed to throw away the or like hide the gun and say like oh shit or something like that you know it's like there's, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing there like was that no about dancing. Dancing. <laughs> no dancing <laughs> but it would be so unbelievable to see like wow that's exactly what i felt and and we never talked about it like we never had a conversation about it and it was just so wonderful for everyone to have the space to be able to communicate through the, their mediums how they feel about the story you know and that i think takes it takes real trust on behalf of the director to to even just like allow anyone the space to to to, to be able to do this you know because like you said before like often you know in the, in the film world you have like very little time and there's very tight deadlines you know? yeah. <laughs> it's very stressful <laughs> you know there's a lot of there's a lot of elements that are really you know working against you as a creative person you know? yeah, very <laughs> much so, so it's, um, it's a huge luxury to, to be able to have the space to, to do something like this and, yeah. and it's and it's really, it's a really bold move and a very trusting move on, on behalf of, of a director to to allow people the space to to do this. Definitely, I I know there's a lot of composers on the uh, on this chat, um, so if, if I might dive into the technical weeds with you just just for a moment or two, um, because it feels like um, uh, a a lot of um, composers at the at the moment will be using a computer to to write. Mm -hmm. And so there will probably be mocking things up with samples, which is sort of uh, kind of vir virtual instruments. And, and then that will exist as a as a sort of a representation of the cue for a long time. And then we'll right at the end, we'll go and record with the orchestra. But mm -hmm. um, I, it feels very much particularly because you're playing so much that you're more creating with with audio. Do you start just by recording uh yourself or or some found sounds what's your blank piece of paper look like on a monday morning yeah well i try um i have just like i have really had to come to terms with not being a fan of the computer <laughs> 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 it took me quite a long time of trying to be a fan of the computer to realizing like ah, it's just not really my medium <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that's you know and, and that's just um, um, well I mean I, th I think as, as, a, as a musician today you know whether it's a composer or or, um, or a performer like I think it's like there's a lot of um, you know because every, everything is becoming very accessible and very like easy you know it's it's a you kind of you you're expected to be able to 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 do everything yourself basically you're you're expected to be able to play everything record everything like you know meet the arrange everything and, and and you know etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. And, and and like it's it's a really there's there's a lot of steps to um 
there's really like a lot of steps to learn at today and and you know interfaces keep changing you know programs keep changing like the you know and now you're also supposed to be like a social media mogul and interacting with with everyone and their grandmother on, on social media <laughs> <laughs> That's the i interact with my grandmother for sure yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so, yeah, not so, around still so, so. my mum certainly <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then, you know, people have kids and what have you, we have to put lunch yeah. and, and, and all of this. So, so it's kind of, and I spent a lot of time trying to wear all of these hats. And I, you know, I do love a lot of these hats. Like I love recording and I love, like, you know, I love working on a computer, you know, for certain things, certain processes that I like. And, um, but I had to kind of, Especially in the last years, I I I I just I gave myself the space to kind of re um, evaluate my creative process and just kind of um, yeah allow myself the space to not compose on a keyboard with with a, with an orchestra sample pack because I just don't find that inspiring and I don't find tip tracks inspiring and I and I you know I I, I love to um, that, that's the sound of people cheering, by the way. Yeah, that's, right? That's the, sound, that's the sound of a thousand people going, I wish, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just check it all out the window. <laughs> but it's, yeah, no, it, it's a, and I, I think, um, you know, I don't necessarily have to, I don't have to play everything myself, but I, 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 I realise that fluidity is a huge part of my process. And, and listening is a huge part of my process that I that I really love. And I, I think it's I think it's really important for for everyone to to just kind of in, in the beginning just like realize what it is that that gets them into like a, a, a fluid state, like a state of yeah. fluid creativity, and, and and accept that that might not be like you know the keyboard and your sample banks you know and that's yeah. totally okay you know it's like it's like totally, <laughs> totally okay it's not the law it's not the law that you have to use sample no exactly and i think I, I, there's so many there's so many interfaces as well that are that are now available that that allow you to access your sample banks that are not the keyboard for example and those, those ah interesting yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, and and that's and that's something that I that I really enjoy as well. Like you know, interfaces that are just a bit more fluid. You know, that that yeah. are for um, uh, you know tuning also not to be. Uh, I- I, I, w- I was going to say I, uh, about tuning, and and this is uh, me being totally geeky. Is yeah. is that there's uh, uh, the the sense of intonation. So, yeah. for instance, I, I think the, the the bathroom scene is a is a perfect example. Yeah. That the the tuning of those uh, initial cello notes, which yeah. are played, you know, very much without vibrato, almost like a, a viol. You know, they, they have a sort of almost medieval timbre. But yeah. then, be, because I mean, it 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 where the fourth sits and where the fifth sits and 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 the sort of like the the way those chords are voiced, they they wouldn't sound the same if you just played them on a cello sample that was all tuned perfectly to 440. It's missing a whole human connection. That's exactly it. Because like, I think for 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 me, like I'm 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 just so like I, I really like love the, the the microscopic details. Like I really just like, that. and that's where that's where my heart beats the, that the strongest like that's where my real passion lies is just like being able to just like look through a microscope to those to those tiny little details like the vibrato and like the intonation i think like intonation like there's so much that you can express with intonation that's not just like um, um absolute you yeah. know well, I mean, equal tempered straight down the on the, on the grid so to speak yeah. Yeah. piano um piano tuning and and that's um and and that's really where 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 i think like a lot of the um, a lot of the feelings lie that we are so kind of starving for today like because today i mean it's, it's all about like you know pop music today it's, it's all completely sterilized and it's all completely yeah. Auto-tune. and to, to be able to just like hear 
here this 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 the, the these like tiny movements like the tiny movements of, of just like you know notes just like stretching themselves like with with within uh, within the intonation or or just like slightly moving and there's so much there's so much expression within those microscopic um, details that you can't get like on that you know play on a keyboard and that and that's why I just like I I I. Uh, I've, I've kind of just stepped away from that entirely and I stopped fooling myself that I've that I've done that. It's really <laughs> don't beat yourself up, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of other people doing that. You don't need anybody else doing it. It was such a um it was such like such a relief when I allowed myself the space to do it. And I was like, oh. wait a minute, like why do I want to, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to. permission permission not to do terrible mock-ups all day and sit in front of a computer. <laughs> Um, there's people, you know that, I, there's people that feel that so well that, you know i'm not saying that oh that's yeah, wrong. We have to yeah. It's just, but i think it's really it's just such a relief when you allow yourself the space to actually use the, the methods that you find personally that you find inspiring and if you know they're like you know that's completely different for for every person and i think that's so beautiful to to you know that, that everyone is allowed the space to to have those those different voices and to have those different intonations in them. You know, definitely. Um, if we move on to Chernobyl, um, which I, I rewatched the whole series. I watched it first time, but rewatched it uh, over the last couple of days. And and to be put back into that extraordinarily visceral, tense, uh, so kind of tragic. In, in, in the sense of people's fates are spread out into the future, you know from the moment that they come into contact with any of the radiation that you, you, each each of the people you see on screen has got a, has got a, a tragic future ahead of them. But I I, I wanted to uh, to talk about how you created the um, the cues and the and, and the sort of soundscapes, but perhaps with with relation to uh, to collaboration and bringing us back a little bit to to where we started because. Um, in terms of uh, perhaps working with a sound recordist like Chris Watson, who, who again I've uh, met and who, who is an absolute uh, a legend, because the uh, the sort of the, the the big picture of going to record in a in the disused nuclear power plant that they that they filmed in afterwards. Um, it's the sort of thing that it's a great idea to have, but it's not always possible to pull off that well. <laughs> I think. And and y you seem to have around you a team of uh, long-term collaborators uh, because you must have known Chris from Touch uh, way, way back and, and then working with Francesco and, and Sam, I guess, as well. And, you know, the sort of... Um, could, you, could you tell us how sort of almost practically what that process w was like to, to, to go and listen and record and then make music from the, the sounds. Yeah, yeah. So it was, um, um, it was really clear that, you know, Chernobyl, um, you know, I was working on both of them at the same time. So I, 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 sp I spent quite a bit of time like, um, uh, thinking about like what was, what was um, different between between these worlds, and and, and you know, but of course, is 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 an event that affected so many people um, that are still very much alive today, and such an important, like I, I think, one of the more important like historical events of, of our like, later history, and um, and it had such yeah, just such a huge impact on so many people that we uh, you know that we all know, you know, people that. In Germany, for example, weren't allowed to eat mushrooms because of you know, you know the, the effects of, of, of the aftermath of, of the explosion and all of this. You know, there's so many, so many deep layers of, of uh, uh, effects that it had on, on people. So I, I thought it was really, really, and, and, and obviously not to mention the people that 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 lost their lives or got mm. sick or you know the, 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 the family members that are still alive today and that. Were, were present and so on and so forth. You know, I thought it was really important to be as honest as possible about what happened there and to not um, like over dramatize like what happened and not sort of like sensationalize it. <clears throat> yeah. 
And, um, um, you know, so, so I, I just thought that, uh, that it was really important that the space itself got um, a real place and a real voice, like in the, um, in the story. And that, and that the space had to be like real, um, and that the radiation, which of course is like one of the biggest characters in this mm. story, that the radiation also had like a voice because radiation, of course, is like we can't see it and we can't film it and we can't uh, capture it, but but we can somehow feel it and we can sense it. And I felt that the radiation really needed to be real and it needed to be present. And uh, so it seemed like very obvious that, that to just go there and to understand also myself a bit better, like what radiation feels like and what it what it is, and, and um, you know, to, to be able to, to to form any sort of opinion for myself about what it is. You know, I had to kind of experience it. So 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 I went there with Chris and and, uh, and Sam. Um, to just basically listen to the space and just try to understand the space through sound and, and uh, experience it. And, and uh, so we, we recorded like hours and hours of, of this uh, program, not knowing at all if this was going to be material that we could use. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a bad idea? Probably. Yeah, exactly. We were just like, you know, this seems like a great idea, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we just you know we just went in there with, with open ears and and, um, and just like you know our curiosity just like you know channeled to the to the max and, and we we're just like okay what's gonna happen and and we just it's 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 so wonderful again when you um to be able to have a dialogue about something like this, like with, with the person, for example, like Chris Watson, who, who just, he has such a, a deep listening practice on, on uh, and I hope everyone in this, this uh, um, knows who Chris Watson is, and, and if, if you don't, I recommend checking him out, because it's like, he Absolutely. has a deep listening practice on, on, a, on, a, on a level that's just like so elevating and inspiring, and, and, and uh, to just being able to kind of experience sound with them and, and just like how it excites them and it's just like it's enough to fire up the whole you know <laughs> <laughs> the whole power plant you know you can even do it and his, uh, enthusiasm wow. it's just a, I think he's a marvelous person to have a dialogue with that sound it was just like it was like a wonderful experience to, to go there and listen to the power plant through his ears and with his ears and his microphones and, and we just got so much amazing material from there. So we managed to, to, um, to create the whole score out of, of these recordings entirely. So, so, and that process basically, I mean, it was, again, like it was a very long and drawn out process because it, it, it required a lot of patience and it required like a lot of, lot of listening and, and like details listening and, and trial and error and, and you know but it was it was I, I just I felt that this process and this story it really needed that attention to the actual facts to the actual details of how this space sounds like and how radiation sounds like and, and so we so I like I took these recordings and then and then um, just listened and extreme detail to, to all of them, to every single second. And then, you know, picked up snippets of the here and there, which were a possible musical material, and then like strip them, you know, move them in the frequency spectrum to, to, to places that could be like, you know, work with them and, and uh, you know, so, so there were like some like, snippets that were completely uh, old, like inaudible that yeah, I yeah, yeah. stress out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it was like a, it was a completely, it was like as as far away from 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 the Joker process as possible. <laughs> like you know, it was it was completely like microscopic. Yes. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I recognise that door squeak. That's door seventeen B from the third. Exactly. Exactly. But did you? So if we if we take as a for instance, because uh, there's. It sounds like you enjoy very much these long periods of, of exploration, and but then 
th there comes the day of reckoning where episode two needs locking and it needs to all be sort of sent to the dub. If we look, for instance, at, at the cue that we just picked out, which again is as another sort of sensational uh, piece piece of drama, it, it, it's it's not so much that um, necessarily that sort of virtuoso scoring with a massive orchestra hopping up and down. It, it feels so much more integrated, uh, and and your the 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 lines between what what are sound design elements, what are musical elements, what are musical sound design elements, all all are very fluid. Um, but if if you took a scene like that, would you be starting with with effectively just that two three minute sequence, and would you then start to place sounds? Uh, to to fit, or do, were you taking a cue that you'd written before putting the cue on and then shaping it? What what was your sort of uh, in the weeds process, cue by cue? So I mean, this the um, it took a really long time for Chernobyl to to find the right way of using the sound, or like to use the. Nice. You know, the right way into the music took, took a really long time um, because it, it like it took a lot of experimenting um, with these this this material before we actually like you know came to a conclusion or like what where we came to a place where it actually like really worked for everyone involved because um, again like the, the big difference between Chernobyl and Joker for example was like Joker is very much like um, you know, it's 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 a it's it's like one man's vision, basically. It's like director led. It's always the same with telly. Exactly. Yeah. No. It's it's like it's it's um um yeah. Joker was very much like Todd vision, Todd's vision, and and you know he was like the the the, the person that that led us through this this vision. But Chernobyl was a bit more of a collaborative process like there were more people involved in the um, you know the producers had a, had a strong voice the writer had a strong voice the director had a strong voice so so and then you know and I obviously have uh, my ideas as well <laughs> <laughs> that's right yes <laughs> you know so it, it really took like episode one took like months to yeah. to to just kind of get the conclusion of and um but it was i think it was like really really worth it so it took a lot of just like trial and error like you know try trying out different things and trying out different sounds and different tempos and, and different uh, aesthetics and and, uh, and stuff like that so so but once once that like was kind of established like okay this is the this is that direction that works for everyone then you know it was kind of possible to create like a bigger um uh library of of those yeah. of and 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 um and then you could go for more like you know create create kind of ground cues or ground pieces that you could then you know place and put up and stuff to like actually add it you know that's so, it yeah yeah and I, I I think that difference uh which which isn't all not every uh younger composer is necessarily familiar with in terms of the the decision making and the the the, the number number of opinions that you might have on a project um and uh, and there's there's a, a sense of um i think tv in, in my experience has a, has a sort of a, a a particular going for the wrong decision maker trying to please the wrong person in telly is is a, is a very bad mistake yeah. um because there are those layers above yeah. often who, who who you need to bring along with your ideas. Yeah. Have you found over the projects that you've done that you um, have have developed any sort of political strategies or do you just try and stay just open and communicative or do you let other people <laughs> do that and do the late night phone calls? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. I definitely prefer to do them by itself. Because <laughs> I'm very much like a, you know, I'm a very much like a hands-on person. I, I don't have like a, you know, a big team of people that are like doing the, 
doing my work. I, I, you know, I don't even have a manager. I, I best you'd still do everything myself. <laughs> 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 I just trying to wear all those hats that I was speaking about. That's right. Get yourself a nice manager. Never have to work again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah. No, so so I, I I have all those conversations myself, but um, oh. but I think you know, and it's it's um, you know, that's kind of the it's it's the, the the complicated and the interesting thing about working within this medium, like with working with uh, film and television, is that the productions are so big, you know, it's, yeah. where, I mean, it can be, it, it, it yeah. doesn't have to be, but it is, um, it is always, like, no matter the scope even of the production, like, it, it's always such um, a big dialogue that you're having, and, and you're having, um, uh, often like you know a bit dialogue in the sense of like you know over an extended time or also like with a lot of people and a lot of people with very sometimes like very different ideas and the music is of course like the element um that you can change the most like in the least amount of <laughs> least amount of time latest in the <laughs> <laughs> so this uh this dialogue can easily become like very heated in the you know in the last in the last stages and you know there's a lot of a lot of things that can change very fast in the in those in those last um, in those last uh, how how do you do how do you <laughs> do, do you find do you, did you find yourself getting unsettled on either of those projects do you do you have I, I'm I'm smoothly segueing into into some questions because there've there've been some wonderful wonderful questions uh, in on YouTube and on on the Zoom chat, mm -hmm. and uh, there's uh, from John uh, uh, Kudunis um, uh, from Australia says, have you uh, developed any daily rituals to get you into that fluid state mentally and physically, and and I think that that the uh, the subject broadly of mental health and dealing particularly with those pinch points. That you describe because it does get a bit tasty sometimes yes no they, i mean this is exactly like this is exactly it like this is where it really um where it is like vital to be um uh feeling good yourself <laughs> for <laughs> those yeah. Oh, yeah. because um uh, you also have to be very careful not to be, because like I said, like you know, these these uh, these last minute conversations can can easily become very heated, and and um, it's very important to not like uh, react too fast or too strongly to situations like that, and to be able to to distance yourself from from like you know snappy reactions. Like you have to be able to kind of create a gap between between yeah. the response and stimuli, you know. And um, totally. so so yes, I do have a, I do have a pretty uh, a strong both yoga and meditation process, which I think is uh, has definitely been key. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only thing that keeps any of us together, isn't it, really? It's just like oh no. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's I think you know yoga is just so it's such a magical tool of, of accessing, you know, just to, to creating fluidity in your joints and creating fluidity in, in, in uh, uh, yeah, in your, in your thoughts and, and, you know, extending this gap um, between, yeah, response and stimuli and, and meditating, <laughs> being, being a part of that process is, is, uh, is also, like, I, I found to be, like, very, 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 very valuable. In that in that whole process, and I think like also the, the more you can bring it into um, into just like the um, up being like a part of your creative process, and you, when you start to uh, recognize how valuable it is, um, both with your inner dialogue and, and your dialogue with other people, then the more you kind of can, uh, can can yeah, you can basically take it into the into the whole uh, equation. Um, I, to I totally agree, and that reminds me to start meditating again because I stopped when we had our last baby, and I I'm broken now. It's all gone. <laughs> it's all gone. 
my head's not in the right place. Um, that w- again, so many, so many beautiful questions. I'm going to sort of like stick a couple of uh, them together here. This is a, from Catherine on YouTube, and and she just says, "Are there any?" Uh, her question was about female composer support groups and companies that you re- recommend. But I, I just wanted to um, to blend that in with a, a remark I heard you make on a, on another interview, I think, which was about describing the the time at the moment as a big awakening. And that whether in terms of just, uh, I think when you, when you probably made that remark, it would have definitely been pre-COVID and would have been pre-Black Lives Matters. And I but think... The, what being on Wigan? I missed that. Uh, it, it, was, it was just a, a phrase that you used where you described the sort of the, the change in after the Me Too movement yes, me too, um, yeah. as, as a, a, a big awakening. Yeah. And... It um, I, and without sort of you know wanting to kind of uh, count count numbers or sort of go back and go who first won what when, mm-hmm. uh, I was just interested in your your experiences as a woman composer right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I I, I felt a huge difference um, uh, because like I've been, I mean, I've been working uh, as a musician for. I mean, a, a lot of years. <laughs> <laughs> Don't never count. Never count. Uh, that's to say, like a lot of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been a few. working with, uh, uh, you know, within within film and TV for like you know over a decade, and, and uh, I think to 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 a lot of people it might seem like I just came out of nowhere, but but like that because um, <laughs> like all of a sudden I became very visible, and that's also like you know very surprising to myself. But, <laughs> but um you know because as a person that's just been like you know i've just been kind of staying with my practice for i mean i guess like almost 20 years i've just been like you know going my route like very slowly but very steadily and then and then uh, and that the same goes for film and, and tv and um i think like you know the 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 the, the general vibe that i came across like as a, as a female film composer, even just like as a, as a female composer, it was like, it was, um, I often came from a place of people just being like, A, like very surprised that I was writing music or that I wrote this music myself. You know, that was like a comment that I would get a lot. It was like, and, and you just wrote this yourself, you know, which is something that... <laughs> <laughs> but- it was too heavy for you to pick up, maybe. Yeah, it was just... <laughs> and what just, are you just... It's, it's, it's something that I'm expecting, like, you know, a, a guy would never probably hear. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So it was like, just like little, little remarks like that, 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 that I was kind of felt very bizarre and, and uh, yeah. you know, were, were kind of... Yeah, just just uh, of its time, I think. And then as in the in the last, I'd say maybe um, yeah, like three, three, four years or so, it, it it's gone from from people being kind of um, unsure of whether they should trust a female for for the job, you know, and and, and being kind of more just like excited and welcoming about a, a, a female person being able to write music. <laughs> and I think all the, all the discussion that came around me too and just like the the um but again like it's not that I was like you know I wasn't sexually harassed or anything like that. Like I wasn't like um, uh, um, uh, like I didn't I didn't experience anything directly related to me too but just as the I mean the discussion uh, um, that happened around it, and, and just like the discussion of, of, of the lack of, of, of presence of women in the industry in general, I think just, just made a lot of people realize, like, wait a minute, there's one percent women composers in the universe, like <laughs> writing, uh, writing this, you know, music to these thousands of films that are that are being produced. I and mean, it's just like when you start seeing these statistics, you just kind of it just makes you kind of you wake up a little bit and you just start to realize like wait a minute that is that is very odd and that that should not be like that because i think in an in an industry where um 
which is all about storytelling and it's all about telling every story under the sun. I mean, obviously, you would want to have every voice under the sun to be able to to chime into, into the, the storytelling because the more the more point of views you have on, on storytelling, the more you know exciting it is, and the more rich it is, and the more you know you get to experience. And, and so obviously, we should you know welcome that. And I, and I think that and I, or I, I mean I hope that the same is happening with. Um, with the awakening that's happening for 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 um, colored people as well at the yeah. moment, you know, there's a very strong, you know, people are just like they're they're tired and they're, they're, they they want to have a place and 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 a voice and, and, and yeah a place for their voice to be heard, you know, in in, in society and, and I think that's just something that should just be celebrated and and I hope it is and I hope it will be definitely. Uh, bravo. Um, could I, I'm going to join a few more questions together and ask you about life in Berlin. So um, obviously, uh, Iceland was originally home, but you, you've settled in Berlin and been there for, uh, for how many years now? For quite, again, quite a few. Quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been, uh, uh, I think it's been 15 years. Yeah, it's been <laughs> That's it. And, and um, there's been a couple of questions asking about Johan and the uh, obviously it's greatly, greatly missed. And um, it, in a way, maybe a sort of frame those uh, questions about what it was like to, to work with him in the wider context of what it was like and what it is like to be part of a musical community in, in Berlin itself. Having, I mean, we, we we know some of the same wonderful people and uh, worked in in some of those places, and and it feels like there is um, there's a, a a collaborative spirit with not just some of the composers like Dustin O'Halloran when he was there or, or Johan that people might be more familiar with, but but a whole wonderful community in Berlin. Maybe I'm painting a rose tinted picture. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe everybody hates each other. She's like, <laughs> get out, Francesco. No, definitely not. No, I think, um, um, yeah, I mean, it stems very much from the same, the same place. I mean, as, as I talked about in the beginning, you know, um, like Johan and I, obviously, we met each other in Iceland in the 90s. And uh, so we are very much like, you know, the part of the same, um, we're very much a part of the same uh, group of friends and group of musicians that were just, yeah. yeah, experimenting and collaborating and having a dialogue and hanging out. And, and, and um, so we were, uh, yeah, we started collaborating like in the, in the 90s, um, just through, through that uh, group of people, and and uh, um, and then in two thousand and three, we, we started like our our first like duo collaboration. Like we, we just like had a recording session in his kitchen where, where we were like you know trying out ideas, and um, and we basically just never stopped. We we just we really kind of you know in each other found our musical soulmates you know and, and uh, so we just continued collaborating since since that since that kitchen recording in, in 2003 and until that until the very last day and it's and it's very you know very uh all those people you mentioned like dustin and francesco and, and like all of those people are, are um, you know also a part of that dialogue so i so I moved to Berlin in 2003 as well, and, and um, uh, so I met um, Dustin and Francesco here. And um, Johan was he moved to he moved to Copenhagen, and then came to Berlin. Um, I forget what year it was. Maybe well, it was 2000 or something. 2000. I don't know, time. <laughs> 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 that was something that he did. But but it was it was so so we were um so I was um uh, in a studio complex and then and he joined that complex as well. It was was Dustin was there and, and some other 
some other mutual friends and we just had this we had this kind of lovely and still have this lovely community of, of, of people that um, just like-minded people you know people that you can have uh, the, the what do you call it before like the water cooler conversation yes it's like, absolutely it's just it's, it's just the kick. to be able to have a dialogue with people especially when you're working as a as a composer you know that tends to be like a very lonely a lonely job and it's just so great to be able to uh, have a dialogue with people that understand the, the, the process you're going through and understand like you know your your ideas and your 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 dialogue heartaches and then. <laughs> yes mostly the heartaches yeah and okay. um, we had a question uh this we're, we're sadly very sadly coming uh sort of reasonably close to the end, to end of our time together which is uh for me a personal a personal shame because i i think many of your ideas that you embody about flow and improvisation and collaboration are, are, are really important um and and i think your extraordinary and well-deserved success one of the byproducts of that is that these ideas which are which i think are uh, are crucial and a great antidote to some of the sort of kind of harsher ways of living in film composing uh, necessarily get more attention which is, is something that i'm very uh, grateful for you for being so brilliant and uh, and making them sort of letting these ideas have, have the attention that they have um but the, the the final questions will be the traditional sort of uh career advice questions which i always find confusing because it's sort of like <laughs> what would you say to somebody who was just starting out but if you're just starting out it it's such a vulnerable time it's so sort of trying to find there, there was several questions about uh, finding your own voice because i think you embody that beautifully um, but there's a question here from from sophie lloyd uh, just the second part of the question which said if you could uh, tell your younger self one thing about female composers what would it be or, or just to broaden that out if you could just tell your younger self uh, anything useful that you that you've learned how how might that look mm, well i think in regards to to um you know people who are starting out and and um you know finding their voices and and um um and those kind of general career questions i think it's I think it's really, really, really crucial. It's really important, and that's the most important thing. And, that, and that's something that I would definitely kind of pound into my younger self: is that it's so important to to listen. To like to to like listening is so so crucial, and that goes for like listening to just like have you know when you're having a conversation with someone. When you're having a dialogue with someone you know that you're collaborating with and also just like listening to yourself and truly like truly listening to yourself and truly respecting what it is that you're hearing and not like you know not listening to to what it is that you think you should be doing or what's cool at the moment or it's like the right process at the moment because it's like like i was saying before like i, th I think most people um you know, there's so, there's so many preconceived ideas about how you're supposed to do music, but like music is such a, it's it's just a form of expression. And I think there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a right way of expressing yourself. Like there shouldn't be, a, 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 as long as you're not hurting anyone with what you're saying, and as, as long as you're not hurting anyone with your action, there shouldn't be any, any, um, restrictions on how you express yourself and I think the way that you um, express yourself in music is best suited in the way that really resonates with you personally and and, and, and I think that takes it takes a lot of time and practice to be able to hear anything like even in that direction like and, and you have to kind of just really stick with that practice and you have to kind of stick with just showing up and showing up again and showing up again and this is like I said I mean I've been I've been doing music professionally like for, for 20 years and it's only first now that you know I'm getting any like real recognition and that's really never even been my kind of aim or, or goal or or, or 
point of, of, of doing it, but but it, it it took a really long time for for you know me just like showing up and showing up and showing up to, to be able to to hear myself. And I think it, that 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 just needs and therefore you know for anyone else to hear me. And I think and I think today it's just like the music industry is, is a very confusing place at the moment because no one's buying records anymore. We can't have concerts anymore. It's it's uh, um, you know, it's just like a very confusing time in, in music history. And, and and I think it's more important than ever that, that people just yeah, like listen and and um, and uh, honor the, their own voice and their own process. And I think the, the, the stronger connected you are to your own your own voice and your own identity and your own process and, and your own state of flow, which, which is always going to be different from everyone else's, you know, like no one has the same, no one has the same voice, like every voice is different. And that's just something that should be not only respected and heard, but also celebrated. And I think it, it just, it, that's something that um, I think it's important for people to, to stand by and, and to, to uh, be patient with as well, because that, you're not going to hear it like instantly. It, 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 it's like a real showing up and real passion. I might not hear shit for the longest time. <laughs> but it's like, it's, I think it's, it's worth the, it's worth, it's worth the chance. That would be worth the wait worth the wait well i think that's an absolutely wonderful and beautiful and, and rather moving uh place to to end hilda thanks so much for uh, for taking some time out to chat to everybody um thank you to everybody who's joined us on on the chat room whether on zoom or on on youtube i i believe that the the session will be available on youtube to watch afterwards if you want to uh, catch up on some of the things that um uh, that hilda's mentioned and, and uh, if you want to reach out to either of us uh, on social media, on the on the usual ways, uh, particularly if there's any, <laughs> if there if there are any names that perhaps that we use that that we that we didn't explain or any any other information, uh, then then I certainly volunteer to be findable, and I volunteer Hilda not to, <laughs> to to have some time off and have a have a break. But thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, thanks to everybody. We're going to wind up here and uh, and say goodbye to everyone. Um, I'm uh, hoping one of our hosts from uh, from BAFTA will pull the plug. And thanks very much to BAFTA for hosting this because uh, I, I think it's it's wonderful to have had such a, uh, a wide ranging and uh, and very uh, I think fruitful and um, warm chat. So thanks thanks very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Oh, it's the Zoom wave. This is how you have to finish your phone call. Two hands with a little dance. Da, 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 da. The jazz hands. <laughs> Hopefully.